Hey guys, I'm here at a Tesla supercharger about to plug in and record a zero to 100% supercharging session. Now you may recall a couple of weeks ago, I took my 2021 Tesla Model 3 and recorded it from zero to 100% on a V3 250 kilowatt supercharger. We went from zero to 100% in 63 minutes. I am now at 150 kilowatt Tesla supercharger. We're going to repeat that test zero to 100% and compare the results. I think this is useful for those that do these road trips and want to know basically about how long it's going to take to charge, whether they're on a 150 kilowatt supercharger or a 250 kilowatt supercharger. So what I'm going to do first is do a quick review of what we observed on the V3 supercharger test and then show the entire recording of this supercharger session and then compare the results at the end. But first, don't forget, if you like what we're doing here on State of Charge, please click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming electric vehicle and electric vehicle charging videos here on State of Charge. So before we look at today's recording, let's take a quick look at the zero to 100% supercharging session I recorded just a couple of weeks ago, uh, right after I had completed a 70 mile an hour highway range test with my Model 3, in which I drove 310 miles from 100% charged way down to zero. Now during this supercharging session, we were able to hit the peak 250 kilowatts that the Model 3 can accept and the V3 superchargers can deliver. But it wasn't for a very long time. Let's take a look at how that went. So it took four minutes to get to 10% state of charge, six minutes to 20%, nine minutes to 30%. In 13 minutes, we were at 40%, 16 minutes to 50%, then 21 minutes to 60, 26 minutes to 70%, in 32 minutes, we were at 80% charge. That's the, the metric that a lot of people use. How long does it take to charge a vehicle to 80%? Even though most of the time people use how long does it take from 10% to 80%, we went zero to 80% in only 32 minutes. That took 10 more minutes to get to 90%. And then we finished up with 100% charged in 63 minutes. Now you'll notice on the right side of the screen, we took in 75 kilowatt hour of energy in that complete session. So now let's take a look at the supercharging session we just did on the V2 supercharger that can deliver up to 150 kilowatts. Now the zero to 100% time to beat is 63 minutes, but we're also gonna look at things like how long did it take to replenish 100 miles of range and how long did it take to replenish 200 miles of range. I made some charts and graphs that we're gonna be able to look at and compare both sessions so we know exactly how much longer you'll wait if you're charging on a V2 versus a V3. I think some of you are gonna be surprised at the results. So after plugging in, it takes us four minutes to get to 10% state of charge. And at that point, we're pulling 143 kilowatts. Now that's the most we're gonna pull during this entire session. And it's only gonna hold it till around 23, 24%, I believe. It takes us seven minutes to get 20% state of charge. And after 11 minutes, we're now at 30% state of charge. I'm gonna stop the video here at 32% state of charge because this is the point where we have now replenished 100 miles of driving range based on my 70 mile an hour highway range test. We don't go by the EPA range test. We use my 70 mile an hour highway range test because that's what I experienced in the real world. And it took 12 minutes to replenish 100 miles of range. Starting the video back up, after 15 minutes, we reach 40% state of charge, and the car's taking in about 92 kilowatts. It takes us 20 minutes to get to 50% state of charge, which is still really quick for an electric vehicle with a large battery. It's got a almost an 80 kilowatt hour battery, and we hit 50% state of charge in only 20 minutes. After 25 minutes, 
we're at 60% state of charge. Now again, I'm gonna stop the video here at 65% state of charge, which took 27 minutes, well, almost 28 minutes. That's because we have now replenished 200 miles of driving range. Starting the video back up, it takes exactly a half an hour to hit 70% state of charge. And seven minutes later at 37 minutes, we are at 80% state of charge. Pretty good for a zero to 80% run, 37 minutes. If you remember, it took 32 minutes on the V2 supercharger. So only five minutes longer on this 150 kilowatt DC fast charger. Now it takes 10 more minutes. At 47 minutes, we're at 90% state of charge. Now, this is the point where most people are gonna unplug. Most people don't stay at a supercharger till 100% because that last 10% uh, state of charge takes quite a while, more than 20 minutes. Uh, some people will hang out if you really need to, and that's why we do this zero to 100% test for those that might be on really long road trips and really need to stay till 100%, but you know, most people don't ever charge their Model 3s to 100% because Tesla advises against it. But we hang out the full time and we end up at 100% in an hour and 10 minutes. That's only six and a half minutes longer than it took us when we did this same test on the 250 kilowatt V3 supercharger. During this session, we took in 74 kilowatt hour, which was one kilowatt hour less than when we did it on the V3 supercharger. There may have been slightly more charging losses on the higher 250 kilowatt charging rate, or the battery could have been at a slightly lower state of charge when I did that last session. Now I know the battery read zero in the cabin, but you can also drive below zero and Tesla actually has a nice size buffer at the end. So it is possible that that battery had a little bit less energy in it than when I did this one. And that's why we took in one less kilowatt hour in this charging session. So now let's take a look at these two charging sessions side by side. Surprisingly, initially V2 jumps out to an early lead and is accepting more power. But after 10 minutes, the V3 supercharger catches up to it and V2 is at 27% and V3 is at 32%. 15 minutes in and V2 is at 39% and the V3 charging Model 3 is at 46% and it has a 7% lead. Um, at this point, V2 is now charging under 100 kilowatts. 20 minutes in, V2 is at 49% and V3 is at 58% and it's opened up a 9% lead. 25 minutes into the charging session and V3 has opened up the widest gap that it's going to have this whole time and that's 10% as V2 is at 59% and V3 is at 69%. After they reach 70%, the charge rate really starts to ramp down and V2 starts to catch up because only V3 has eclipsed 70%. At the 35 minute point, the gap is now down to only 6%. V2 is at 77% charged and the V3 charging Model 3 is at 83% charged. It takes 42 minutes for the V3 supercharger station to get the vehicle to 90% state of charge. And at that time, the V2 charging car is at 85%, only 5% behind. Now at that point, the V2 charger is charging at a higher rate than the V3 is because the vehicle is at a lower state of charge and it can accept more power. Therefore, the V2 charging car continues to catch up to V3. And at the one hour point, the V2 supercharger is only 2% behind the V3 supercharger, 97% to 99%. So basically, if you plan to run your Model 3 or Model Y down to zero and stay at a supercharger for one hour, don't bother hunting around for a V3 supercharger because it only makes about a 2% difference. The V3 charging Model 3 reaches 100% charged in one hour, three and a half minutes and it takes the V2 charging Model 3 six and a half minutes longer as that tops out at one hour, 10 minutes exactly. So what do you think? 
A little surprising, no? I mean, there's very little difference in charging on a V3 supercharger as there is compared to charging on a V2 supercharger. Just a matter of a couple of minutes. Uh, I'm really surprised that it was that close and I regularly supercharge. You know, the thing is, most people think, oh, uh, 250 kilowatts is gonna charge so much faster than 150 kilowatts. But you have to really look at the whole charging curve. And in the case of the Model 3, and I suspect it would be the same for the Model Y, it's not that much of a difference. So I prepared a couple of charts. Let's take a look at the power chart first. Now here you'll see that the V3 supercharging Model 3 jumped up to 250 kilowatts at about the 9% state of charge point. So relatively quickly, it was up to taking the full 250 kilowatts. However, it only holds it to the 17% state of charge point. So only for 8% of the charging, it takes in the maximum charge rate. And then it starts to drastically drop down here. Now take a look at the V2 charger. That car only reached a maximum charging rate of 143 kilowatts. We never saw 150 kilowatts, but it gets to it a little bit quicker. It gets to it when it's around four and a half, five percent state of charge, and it holds it all the way up to the 25% state of charge point. And the interesting thing is at that point, the two uh, superchargers are charging at the same rate. It's pretty interesting how they kind of meet at this point, but then the V2 supercharger drop, starts to ramp down. Don't really know why, because it can accept the same amount as a V3 supercharger at that point, but it doesn't. And it's dropping down while the V3 supercharger holds uh, about 140 kilowatt charging all the way up to the 40% state of charge point. And that's when it starts this consistent ramp down. It's almost a straight line uh, between 40% and 100% state of charge for the 250 uh, kilowatt V3 supercharger. The, the line of the uh, V2 su supercharger isn't quite uh, as neat as that. You can see it, it kind of dips down here and then it levels off for a while. And then at the 65% state of charge point, the two superchargers, V2 and V3, uh, they, they converge. And from there on in, the final 35% of charging, it's nearly an identical charging curve. So, you know, take a look at this. You, you, it, it would kind of surprise me that um, the time to charge was so close because this big section here in the beginning where it was taking in so much power, and then this other section here from 25% up to 65%, uh, the V3 was also accepting more power. So I, I would almost think that that would have translated to, to 10 or 15 minutes of faster charging, but it really didn't. And uh, since we're talking about faster charging, I also made another chart, and this one is time to charge. I think this is what most people that are interested in electric vehicles are more concerned with. Now, I know a lot of uh, the hardcore EV fans, uh, myself included, love looking at these charging graphs and charts and the kilowatt draw and everything, but look, the average EV owner doesn't care about any of that stuff. They just want to know how long does it take me when I plug in to get to a certain state of charge or to fully charge so I can continue my road trip. That's all they care about. They don't care about 250, 150 charging curves. They don't want to look at any of this stuff. They just want to know, look, I'm on a trip. How long does it take me to charge so I can keep going? That's why we made this second chart. Let's take a look at that now. Okay, so as you can see, the Y axis is the state of charge and the X axis is the time charging. You see the X axis tops out at 70. That's because the V2 supercharging session took 70 minutes. Okay, now let's take a look at the beginning here. As you could see the first couple of minutes, they're about the same. The, the V2 supercharger actually was slightly ahead of the V3 supercharger for the first three or four minutes. But at that point, the, uh, the 250 kilowatt V3 supercharger takes the lead. Uh, and at the 10 minute part, the V3 supercharger has already added 100 miles of range back to the car. 
um, it takes the V2 supercharger two minutes longer. That's 12 minutes. So if you needed to add 100 miles of range to your Model 3, uh, there's a two minute difference. Uh, now this 100 mile range that you're adding, I'm talking about what I observed with my 70 mile an hour highway range test, which was 310 miles. My dual motor long range Model 3 is EPA range rated at 353 miles, but I don't use the EPA range rating when I do these videos. I use what I have observed. And as far as I'm concerned, my car is a 300 to 325 mile EV, not 353 like the EPA range states. I'm not saying other people can't get it, but I can't. The way I drive, and especially on highways, um, a 310 is about as good as it's gonna get for me. So uh, moving forward, uh, if you look at the 23 minute mark, that's when the V3 supercharger added 200 miles of range. It takes the V2 supercharger four more minutes because it hits the 200 miles of range added in 27 minutes. So, you know, you're looking at about four minute difference between the V2 and the V3 if you're on a road trip and you needed to add about 200 miles of range. Now that would be provided you plugged in at a very low state of charge like I did because as the state of charge is higher, the car charges slower, which you can see from this graph, and that's the case with all electric vehicles, not just Tesla models. Moving up the line here, it takes 32 minutes for the V3 supercharger to get the vehicle from zero to 80% state of charge. On the V2 supercharger, it took 37 minutes. So it took five minutes longer from zero to 80%. 80% is the point where most people will unplug from a DC fast charger or a Tesla supercharger because that's when the charging rates really start to slow down. Unless you really need that extra range, we always recommend you unplug it around the 80, 85% point. And if you do that and you were to plug in at 0%, there's a five minute difference between a V2 and a V3 supercharger, which quite honestly really isn't bad at all. Now, as you can see, that's where the charge rate really starts to slow down. The line doesn't climb quite as much and both the, both the vehicles kind of converge here. Um, the V3 supercharger finishes up in 63 minutes and the V2 supercharger needed 70 minutes to reach 100% charge. Well, that's it for our Tesla supercharger showdown. What did we learn? Well, if you're going to do a complete charging session from zero or a low state of charge, 5% or whatever, all the way up to 90% or 100%, it really doesn't matter which one you're at because you're talking a matter of a few minutes. But if you're just plugging in, say from 10 to 50%, then there's a little bit of a gap there because in a, 25 or 30 minute charge, you might have to wait five more minutes and that's, you know, 20, 25% longer. So it does make a difference if you're just plugging in for that short burst of energy, 10 to 40%, 10 to 50%, something like that, then it might make sense to go to a V3 supercharger if you can find one in your area. But I wouldn't drive 10 more minutes out of my way to use a V3 supercharger if you can plug in to a V2 supercharger that happens to be closer because you'll waste more time driving there than you're gonna save in charging. It's up to you, you make that decision. Uh, I think most people are probably gonna be surprised that these were so close because everybody looks at that number, 250, 150, and you figure, wow, it's gotta be 40% faster, what savings? it really isn't much time savings at all. Let us know in the comments section what you think about the difference in V2 and V3, because I'm interested in hearing your opinions and having a conversation about this. But that's it for today. We're all done with the Supercharger Showdown. Don't forget, please click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on State of Charge.